good morning. Welcome to AI 237. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoicing, and I am glad in it. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good. And uh, welcome to AI 237. AI stands for Advancing Intelligently. And this is the ministry under the covering of KON Mighty Son of God Church that reaches out to the Hudson County area. And I believe that I'm releasing a sound, a siren in this area for couples and that's why ministry starts with right now is couples married couples dating couples engaged couples because my power in this area is to raise up family this is especially to the Hudson County area now the state county couples want to travel to come that's okay but this is especially to Hudson County area couples uh, this is the new ministry that I'm doing and, it's, and this, this can also be someone's church. I can be your pastor and pastor the couples. This church will be quite unique. We will not be meeting for a Sunday morning service. We most likely will meet probably twice a month or twice every uh, um, I'm going to be training you how to raise up your family. And so this is what I'm going to be offering in this area. I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we come as more people pop on this morning but uh, I want to thank God for this morning uh, last night was an awesome pouring out of God's spirit at the I am initiative and it was a spirit filled night there were all believers in the house and so we entered into worship and praise and we minister it was an exciting time last night and I'm so glad what God did he renewed my strength he renewed the strength of my staff he's raising up two young ladies who I believe will be great leaders in our nation I'm so glad for what God did last night. Thank you for those that came out last night. To my wife, to Reverend Marcus, Ron Salente, to, uh, to all the people that came out last night. It was a blessing. Sister Sue, her daughter, my student, uh, the baby who I fell in love with, <laughs> the grandmother, Ella, Minister Lisa Brown, uh, when she had the line came out. Just had a good time last night, man. And the chief of police came with Cora. And also Councilman Ruby Cotton came out. I'm grateful to have these uh connections and these network systems. It'd be amazing. You, 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 you'll be amazed how much you can accomplish when you learn the network with people and not turn everything into a protest and a red sign and a public blasting because people have more resources than you have. If, if people don't offer a service that you can afford, we're going to blast them. Wrong approach. Wrong approach. I'm just so glad guys are giving me networks and skills that have prevailed over 40 years, and I'm so glad for that. I want to pray my prayer. I'll pray all the time. I'm starting to do this every time I get on live for AI 237 and pray this for all my, first of all, I pray this for my supporters, my tithers, my givers. I always set that group aside first because they understand the power supportive ministry and what you calls for ministry God will calls for you please don't steal God's tithes and offerings because you might not have the devout rebuke and uh, there's certain things you're not allowed to say at funerals because too much truth people can't handle it but there's some folks who just been uncovered <laughs> the, the devourer came in and took you out because you was uncovered and keep in mind the devil doesn't know everything so he got to tap the market too to see what's available to him Given the story the other day, there's, a, there's a, uh, an article on my page, like I'm gonna be posted, where this lioness is trying to catch one of these willowbees, a uh, willowbees, which is like these animals that look like uh, like mules, and it's like to them it's like steak and eggs, and like these willowbees are coming through the uh, forest, like like five, six hundred, eight hundred, a thousand of them, and there's one lion that's sitting there trying to decide which one he's gonna get. As, as the willow beasts run through, the lioness can't get one of them. Can't get one of them. That just reminds you of the devil. He can't get everybody, but once in a while, he's going to grab somebody. Because if he's not allowed to grab somebody, then he's not a devil. If he's not allowed to be the devil, the dad of evil, then God violates his rights to be a devil. Because he got the authority from Adam. But if you see this clip, President Crystal, good morning. You'll also notice that the male lion walks up, runs in the middle of the crowd, and just grabs one. 
I keep thinking about all the willow beasts, willow beasts that ran past the lion and the lioness. That represents God's mercy. I mean, even though the devil makes an attempt to snatch sinners or sinners, sinners or saints, he don't get all of them. And that's called God's mercy, God's grace. But every once in a while, if you're not covered by the blood of Jesus, the enemy can come and snatch you out. And so, I do this prayer. I pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, that he may give unto us the spirit of wisdom, revelation, in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that my eyes may be enlightened, that I know the hope of your calling, the glorious riches that are inside the saints, and that exceeding of your power, the us word, because we believe, watch this, according to the working of your mighty power, which you exerted in Christ when you raised him from the dead. <laughs> that means the level of power that you extract from God is based on how much faith that you have in the resurrection of Christ. So you got some of y'all go all in. God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe. I believe. And based on you believing and how deep you go in determines what you pull out. God bless you, Commissioner Emmanuel Capers, for your leadership. For the renaming of the school, we're praying for you, Emmanuel Capers, and um, God bless you, God bless T, T, God bless the rest of our commissioners, keep me abreast on the privatization of the uh, IAs, is this the rumor, is this the truth, I need to know this, okay, because uh, I got that question came up last night in our meeting, and I said, Emmanuel Capers will let me know if that was a real issue, so please let Pastor Duffy know, okay. I also want to meet with you, Emmanuel uh, Capers, about a pilot school program that this company has offered our district. I tried to bring it in a couple of years ago, but I want to bring back to the table a pilot school, okay? Uh, a pilot program, a pilot school, where I think we need about 2,000-something students we need for, uh, for room and space. I'm going to do a pilot school, a pilot school, yes. And combine that with a trucking school, pilot school, and a computer training school. Those focus groups with a health and fitness component and a strong faith-based initiative. I'm going to talk to you about that, Commissioner Manuel Capers. And the IM initiative is growing. I'm going to get back to stop at the prayer, stop at the stop at the uh, prayer at the stop sign. All right, so Commissioner, reach out to me, Manuel Capers. God bless you. So here we go. So I just gave you the Ephesians prayer to the God of, to the God of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, that it may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that my eyes are enlightened, that I may know the hope of your calling. The glorious riches that are inside the saints and that exceeding greatness of your power to us word, because Michael McDuffie believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you exerted in Christ. When you raise him from the dead, far above all principalities and all powers and all mights and all dominion. That prayer seems to let me know that the level of power you extract from the kingdom is how deep you believe. See, I keep saying this, y'all. God is a discriminant. He doesn't give everybody the same thing. Now, it's available to everybody, but everybody doesn't put the effort in to fully believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's why when you, when you talk to the Apostle Paul or Peter or one of the Jewish Christian leaders who wrote the New Testament, every time you talk to them, they'll be boasting and bragging about who Jesus Christ is. See, see, to the, see out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So if Christ is not in your heart in abundance, he's never part of your conversation. He doesn't come out at the job. He's not being glorified in your word. You know, a lot of times we only got Christ in our heart to a 30-fold level. And 70% of the time you saying what you want to say. And then we got some folks who got Christ in their heart 60%. And 40%, you know, you don't talk about Christ. But when you got 100% of the kingdom working in you, it's almost like everything you say that comes out your mouth somehow connects to the kingdom. I tell you, to the level of your belief determines the power that comes out the kingdom. So a lot of times the enemy is not on the outside, it's on the inside. Because you got to be fully persuaded that when you start believing, power is released. And I'm not talking about power like an American society power. K 
kingdom power. A power in the kingdom that transforms hearts and minds, man. That, that's the power I'm talking about. The power that drives a cancer. And the power that stops devils in their tracks. We talk about to the abundance of the heart and mouth speaketh. All right? Now I want you to I'm, I'm going to teach something as I drive towards my destination. The deep thing about John chapter 10, and I taught this before, but I can't seem to let this thing go. Jesus Christ describes a religious system that he calls that he calls a thief and a robber. Why would Jesus Christ call the Pharisees thieves and robbers? I thought the Pharisees were Jewish leaders of the temple. Yes, they were. I thought the Pharisees were supposed to be the Jewish representation from God to the people and the people to God. That's what they're supposed to be. I thought they ran the temple for the sacrifices except the priesthood. Yes, that's what they are supposed to be. But we come to find out when we study the Bible that this system had become perverted, corrupted, and twisted. They turned a prayer house into a house of thieves and robbers. So Pastor Kevin Greenwood, when you read the story of McCole, Jesus Christ spent a majority of his time ministering to sinners, but also attempting to bring behavior modification to the Jewish religious systems of his day, which were ran by his own people called the Jews. And this is no throwback on all Jews because the same Jews they talk about that were wicked and twisted from that same group are other Jews that came out that became the remainder, which means out of the large group is a portion of Jews that call on the name of Jesus. So all Jews are not bad. It's like all black folks are not bad. All white folks are not bad. This is called uh, a set-aside portion or tithe or portion that pressed in the Christ and they really believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. But in John chapter 9 and John chapter 10, it is possible to be in a religious system and you be blind to the truth that that system is killing your community. All the spiritual resources to advance the kingdom of God, but you're trapped inside of a Jewish temple called the Herodian Temple and think all the action takes place inside. When you're supposed to come to the Herodian Temple, get prayed up, and go outside the temple and impact all of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world, and even rescue the Gentiles. But the system became a thief and a robber. All right, the thief and the robber. We love to quote that scripture, John 10, verse 9 to 10. The thief comes to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. And I used to read that scripture back in the early 80s and 90s, and everybody I talked to in my circle kept telling me that this was the devil. This was the devil. But as I've gotten older and began to do my own research, I realized Jesus Christ was not talking about the devil directly. He was talking about the devil indirectly, but directly he was talking about the religious Jewish systems that was fronting or capping. New word that the kids use in my school now, capping, faking, and act like they were the real thing. They was offering fig leaves and saying it was fig fruit, liars. And Jesus cursed the system and saying about a generation, you all gonna be over anyway. And I know you think I know you think by killing me you get rid of me. Not knowing by killing me, you multiply me. So this was the word of truth that Jesus was given to the people during his time in the first century. So when you get to the famous scripture of John 10, verse 9 to 10, where it says the thief comes to rob, steal, come, the thief comes to rob and steal. It is when I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. There were things we took with that scripture and we took it out of this contextual setting. Because when people hear life, life more abundantly, they think of cars and houses and I claim a husband or a boo, you know, they start claiming that. But when you read the contextual setting, the one that got the life and life more abundantly is the man that got his eyes open when God put, when Jesus put mud on his eyes. He got the life, life more abundantly. When it says that the voice of a stranger they will not hear, 
he's referring to the man that told the Pharisees, oh, you guys keep asking me the same dumb question. I am that guy that Jesus opened his eyes. Maybe you guys will become his disciples. Boy, you guys will know so much, but you don't even know how this sinner can open the eyes of a blind man. And they said, how dare you try to teach us? And they threw him out. And they thought by throwing him out, they was doing him a disfavor. But by throwing him out, it really was Jesus. And I let Jesus does not attempt to put him back in the temple. Jesus goes to the gospel that says, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of man? He said, who is he so I can worship him? And Jesus said, I am he. And the man fell down and worshiped Christ. And Christ does not turn down the worship, which goes to show that Christ Jesus is God almighty. He receives the worship. He doesn't turn it down. It's in John chapter nine. Okay. So, John chapter 10 Jesus is really saying there is a religious system that's existing but it's only kicking off figs it's not kicking off no fruit it's not producing the way it should produce and that system is a thief and a robber a thief is sneaky and the robber is straight up and then Jesus says I am really the doorway to the people's hearts you guys are fake he said, God sent me to be the head shepherd. I'm in charge of the sheep, not you. You think you are, but you're not. He said, when I come, I'm going to open the porter, and I'm going to lead my people away from your false religious systems. I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to train them so they can go in and out and find green pastures. Go in and out. Go into the spirit realm. Come to the physical world. Go into the second heaven, bring into the first heaven. I'm trying to go in and out, live their lives, and live it in a spirit of abundance. And abundance does not necessarily mean physical goods. It means an abundance of life and peace and joy and such a walk with Christ that it far exudes money and possessions. Peace of mind, my God. Able to smell the roses, able to walk down the street with your boot, hold hands, and look up and say, We're alive. That's life, life more abundantly. I know people got millions and billions of dollars, but have no peace of mind. That's life more abundantly. I know folks who go to church services every Sunday and they worse when they come out. That's not life more abundantly. Attending a service doesn't make you a believer, just like sitting inside of a garage doesn't make you a car. <laughs> so, so this is why I love John chapter 10 because it looked like Jesus went in on them. When Jesus goes in on, on, in on someone or there's some laws or procedures or principles that's most important, he will use these famous, two, these famous two words. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, verily, which means most importantly, most importantly. Some translation says, most assuredly, most assuredly, which means out of everything that I'm saying, you better check this out. Whatever I say, if you plan not listening, if you plan not listening to the 99% of my sermon, you better hear this part. That's what that word barely, barely means. And so Jesus points out the principle. He said, you guys been going to the temple, hanging out with thieves and robbers. But I'm about to shift this whole thing and bring you out of that system and bring you into the kingdom of God where the system operates by faith in Christ Jesus. And you won't be able to physically see the kingdom over there, the kingdom over there. The kingdom is within you. And this was the methodology and the system that Christ was raising up that cost him his life. Now, this is why I can tell when I'm talking to church folk or when I'm talking to the church because, hey, Coco, good, good morning, Sue. When you're talking to the church, the word of God penetrates hearts and young teenagers start crying. When the church is speaking the kingdom, the word of God penetrates hearts. You know, nothing is worse than to meet someone that religious and they're just as full as devils as sinners. So that, that is the tricky part about church folk. But when the church walks in the kingdom, even when you hug someone, something that happens in the hearts of people, that's supernatural empowerment, baby. That's what I saw last night at the I Am Initiative. That's what I saw last night. Barely, barely, truly, truly. Man, when you start operating these principles, man, I, 
I get so hot. Now see, now while I'm talking to you, and this side, this side, this side, my body temperature shot up 20 degrees. Now I know I'm drinking my beautiful coffee, but I can feel the presence of God when I start talking. This is what happens when you understand John 9 and John 10. You gotta be able to separate religion from relationship. You gotta separate the church building from the church. You gotta separate what I call, you gotta separate what I call uh, the, the stone building versus the real living stones, which we are. We gotta separate uh, reading the epistles in the Bible and that's becoming living epistles. So you gotta separate the two. If you don't separate the two, you would think they're the same. They're not the same. So Jesus in John chapter 10, I'm, and I'm teaching this to one of my uh, to one of my spiritual sisters, Sister Sue, during our lunch break, Bible study, our lunch break. Uh, we're teaching them the difference between the fig tree and the fake tree. <laughs> and when you start to minister for the power of the kingdom, it's not the many quotations of scriptures, it's the sincerity of heart. It's your integrity that wants to touch people's lives. And when integrity is seen and felt by teenagers, they know the real deal. They know what love is, man. They can feel it. They can sense it. And let me tell you something, man. This is what Jesus explains in the Gospel of John chapter 10. Is I lead my sheep out. Some of you watching me right now, you're about, you about to find the real meaning of Christ Jesus. Yeah, I know you've been to the church building. I know you sat in the church sanctuary. I know you sung in the choir. I know you've been a deacon, you've been a trustee, all those titles, but you never had an encounter with the kingdom. So that's the that's that's the whole thing. The encounter with the kingdom. We had an encounter last night. The spirit of God fell. Oh my God! And that little baby. I'm in love with the little baby. I don't, I don't know what the baby name is, but she wanted us to. Stay. One of my students came last night and brought her baby. And boy, he was so joyful. Oh my God. I had, to, I had to hand the baby back to, to the mother because I know I am when it comes to babies. But I was so moved by the mother, the baby, my sister Sue, daughter. I was glad to see some teenagers last night who gave us some wisdom about starting clubs. Clubs that travel. Clubs that go to museums. We're going to do some clubbing. And we, had, we even empowered one of the daughters to say, open up your own club. This is what God is doing in this hour. Please learn the difference between who really is the shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd. And if Jesus is the chief shepherd, I want to sit under the shepherds that he appointed. Some folks are self-appointed. They're not God-appointed. I love your fig tree teaching. Uh, you teach it like I've never heard it before. That's called, I keep sitting with Sue. You see Coco above you, Crystal? Coco turned that whole thing about God. Jesus flipped everything. He flipped the tree. <laughs> he flipped the tables. <laughs> Ever since she say flip it, I've been using that junk. <laughs> the baby was adorable. Did you see the, oh my God. Sister Sue sent me a picture of the baby. I couldn't even look at it. I was like, I look at this baby. Oh my God. Oh, I'm going to have to spoil that baby. Oh my God. Jeez, I'm going to have another God child. <laughs> mm. That little boy got me moving. And my wife was, was talking about blessing that little baby. So I tell you, man. God is awesome, man. God is awesome. God is awesome. And uh, this morning, I got invited to a meeting with the congressman. I'm going to be bringing up the IM Initiative programs in our city. I'm going to be talking about my high school. And I'm going to talk about programs that we can do to really change our urban cities. We're not waiting for Washington, D.C. We're not waiting for to be complaining between Republicans and Democrats. I got the kingdom already, baby. We got the kingdom. You know what's so deep that Jesus said to the religious establishment? He said this in our quote. He says, I'm the doorway to the sheep. And I'm going to open up the porter and bring my sheep out. And those of y'all who want to stay in that system, you stay right there. But I'm going to open the prison door and let these people out who are calling on my name. Yes. And you like that junk, Crystal? Flip it. <laughs> Flip it. <laughs> I told you, uh, Sue got to write a book on Flip It. You got to write a book on it. I'm, gonna, I'm pushing people, baby. I'm pushing. I'm pushing people. Crystal V. Johnson works my radio broadcast. 
Now, Sue's going to be doing a broadcast. We're going to put together a teenage radio show. I'm not waiting. That's what God told me. He says, don't wait anymore. He says, pursue, pursue, pursue. And so I'm aggressive in raising up ministers. If you're out there and you feel there's a call of God in your life, you need to reach out to me. This Saturday at 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, I'm doing a seminar on signs and wonders. I invite teenagers. I invite church folk. It'll be at the building 9 to 12, and we're going to serve some little, little food at 12 o'clock. Uh, maybe if Sister Sue going to come, she can find some nice healthy food to eat from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. i got to be done by 1 o'clock, though, because i got to drive, get on the road. But I'm going to be teaching on signs and wonders. If you want to know about the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, the gifts of the Spirit, how to interpret dreams, uh, what does it mean by the anointing, this is a seminar you don't want to miss this Saturday from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And I invite people who are members of my church and outside of my church. Now, I know this was a spontaneous seminar. I'm doing a lot of things spontaneously because I want to see how bad people want it. Now, I don't care if five people show up. I don't care if three show up. I'm teaching this Saturday, 9 o'clock to 12 at 77 Park Ave, Patterson, New Jersey, 07524. I believe God wants to raise up leaders and show them how to operate in things of the kingdom. So, Thaddeus Parker, President Crystal, just start to create a flyer for me for Signs and Wonder Conference. Suggest a love offering. It's thirty dollars. That's a great the love, love offering. That shouldn't stop you from coming if you can't afford the love offering. That's okay. But it don't be cheap. If you fed well, come get well. All right. If you fed well. When I make it, okay. As here, yeah, we're gonna do a teenage radio. Yeah, and uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, where God wants to do a work, and it's a quick work. And God keep telling me pursue, pursue, pursue. He says, I got young folks waiting to meet you, Pastor Duff. He said, stop chasing the old folks. He said, stop trying to recycle. Go got some new people. Give me $20 regular. He said, pursue, pursue, pursue. And after last night, watching them two young teenagers, those two girls, there's a truckload of kids and students who are not bound by the Herodian temple. But they're looking for a real spirit. They're looking for the real authenticity of the kingdom. Not in the spirit of arrogance and pride, but a spirit of openness, a spirit of, well, McDuffie, this is me. I'm struggling. I'm on drugs. I'm cutting class. I curse out my parents. But every time I come in the presence of you or the kingdom citizenship, mm -hmm. I feel convicted. I, 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 I need a change. I, I, so when you, bring, when you create that atmosphere, then God can penetrate hearts. You know what God got a problem with is arrogance. I see, I see, I'm already saved. I don't need you, I got together. I already got together. No, 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 we broken, man. We broken, we need a savior. When you come into a room and you confess you're broken, and I confess I'm broken, then God can mend the pieces. The problem with the Pharisees, they didn't think they was broke. And they thought they saw everything. Oh, nothing wrong with us, we don't need no savior. We don't need Jesus. I'm gonna say something, and what I'm about to say, it's gonna be controversial, and uh, you know, you know, not that I like controversy, but it seems to follow me. <laughs> you know, whenever Chrissy kids come up, the uh, radio is always available, and uh, we're gonna use these social media pieces more strategically, thank you, and more wisely. We're not gonna sit around and wait for the next killing, and the next white man do me wrong rally. We're going to operate the kingdom now. We're going to do some things now. We're going to do some crazy things that I call the advancement of the kingdom. I'm a firm believer that God is not, we're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us. As a matter of fact, the script, the song we sung last night, he's in the waiting, which means he's waiting on us. But we got to train up the saints, man. We got to train them up. And it's Saturday, 9 to 12. And keep in mind, when I invite people, it doesn't mean you have to come to everything. Don't feel obligated. One thing I don't want to feel is forcing folks to come out of obligation. 
because it wouldn't bother me sadly if one person showed up. I'm gonna teach that thing like it's a room full of people because there's an audience that's on Facebook Live that's watching me every time I pop on. And if y'all can really join, join in, become a part of M318 and make a monthly commitment, a monthly contribution, sow a seed every time you watch me, you'll be amazed what God would do with the kingdom. Because when you start giving it to the kingdom, there's a harvest, man. There's a harvest, that's that principle. Now I wanna tell you something, we need to align ourselves. Yes, I'm gonna tell you something, man, which is so crazy, right? Watch this. This is crazy, but it, but it makes sense. And hear me, and please hear it in the spirit I'm giving it. And I want you to really show you how trick we are as a society. We tricked. And uh, please hear it in the spirit that I'm giving you. America is backwards. The United States of America is so backwards. And the reason why I say that because I think we are the most religious country with no relationship with Christ. We are temple driven, but we're not living temples. We love to talk about stones and don't understand we're the living stones. And you can always tell what's in the abundance of someone's heart by listening to them. And let me first give you the sympathy side because I got to always say this for some of you folks who get easily offended. I'm still hurting over the death of Kobe Bryant and the people that died on the helicopter incident. Watch me. Listen to me. I'm still hurting the Dr. Miles Monroe and Ruth Monroe and six others went down in a plane accident in 2014, about the time of my wife and I anniversary when I went down to Nassau, Bahamas to celebrate with Dr. Miles Monroe. I'm still hurting over the death of Isaac McDuffie, my dad. I'm still hurting over Brenda Hendricks, the death of my mother-in-law. I'm still, see the point is, uh, everybody's hurting. See, this is the point I'm making. And different people are hurt at different levels because death is not a stranger. Now we already know that death is the time to die. But here's the kingdom question. Who conquered death in the grave? Christ Jesus. So whenever you start talking about death, Jesus Christ should be a part of the conversation. All right, now listen to me, please. Hear this in the spirit that we give this. Since God recognizes that America never talks about Christ to death comes, so God continues to let death come because we never talk about Christ Jesus until death comes. You know, see, right now, everybody's real spiritual now because we had a tragedy. And America's pattern is <laughs> keep religion out until death comes because we can't control death. So when death comes, we start mentioning God a little bit. Because I said a little bit. You know, um, you know, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coco. Thank you. Uh, you know, well, you know, Kobe Bryant is playing in heaven. You know, his, his daughter is dunking, uh, dunking balls in heaven and, and uh, they're in heaven and, 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 and you know, and, and Heaven received two angels. I, I love how folk just put folk in heaven. Man. I love it. And I like that you guys talk about heaven and heaven and heaven. Right? But here's the problem I have with this conversation. How can we never talk about Christ regularly? Whether NBA, Major League, Hollywood. How come Christ is not the topic of discussion until death and tragedy? How do we put everybody in heaven? When, while we're on the planet, Christ is not the topic of discussion. Now he pops up in an interview every now and then, we'll mention it, but Christ Jesus is supposed to, is supposed to ex ex exude us, it's supposed to come out our pores. I mean, we start to talk, people can tell we're a child of God. We should be trying to flip coins. I heard two great speeches last night, and I laughed, and I chuckled, I said, wow, that's great. Michael Jordan and Shaq. 
Shaq and Michael Jordan got to speak at the celebration of life of Kobe Bryant and his daughter. Michael Jordan cried the whole time, right? But in Michael Jordan's speech, there's no mention of Christ. And please hear me, I'm making a point here, all right? In Shaq's speech, there's no mention of Christ, but there's a mention about him playing basketball in heaven. See, in the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker, I'm trying to figure out what's in the abundance of our heart. How come Christ is not mentioned in none of the funeral speeches? Okay? And I realized that we got a lot of stuff in our heart that has nothing to do with Christ Jesus. Just because you're an NBA star doesn't mean you're a heavily star. Just because you're a Hollywood star doesn't make you a heavily star. Just because you did a whole lot of earthly things, because the Bible talks about that, you can do a whole lot of good things, but have not love, you have not God, you've done nothing. So here's the point I'm making. How come Christ Jesus is not mentioned more at funerals that get national wide attention? I was waiting for an altar call. I was waiting for a preacher to have a word. I'm waiting for someone to talk about the love of Jesus. I'm trying to figure out how come that's not mentioned. You know why? Because we're ashamed of Christ. Separation of church from everything. I'm only going to mention the heaven when I need something to look forward to because I cannot cover myself in the midst of the pain. It's almost like we got to be apologetic to mention Christ Jesus' name in public. And know what I realized in John chapter 9? That's where that spirit come from. Don't mention his name. Don't mention Yahshua. Don't talk about Jesus. Shh, 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 shh. I don't want to offend anybody. How can you offend someone other than telling them they're going to hell if they don't have Christ as their savior? Where's the altar call at these homegoing services? I was, I was praying to let T.D. Jakes preach and someone that had a word. I, but of course, no. Vanessa came up and gave some great words. I'm praying for her. And I know people are hurting. But as an apostle and prophet, if you're going to talk about death, let's talk about the guy that kicked death behind. That's Jesus. I'm trying to figure out when it's going to be the altar call at the funeral. When is the door going to be open? Is Michael Jordan going to talk about his relationship with Christ? Uh, is, is somebody going to mention... Uh, by the way, uh, I have a closer walk with Jesus. I'm listening for these testimonies, and I don't hear it because we're still politicking. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend the Jewish audience, so don't miss Jesus' name. Oh boy, I want to lose viewers. So don't talk about Jesus. This is all about Kobe and the daughter. I say I understand that, but Jesus kicked death behind, and we're steady putting folk in heaven. And I'm trying to figure out, everybody that's watching nationwide, can we do more than just sing a gospel song? Can we open the doors of the church? Can, see, now I'm the enemy because I tell you the truth. That's what Galatians says. Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? And we like to play around. It's the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is, how come at these homegoing services, Christ is not mentioned? Would you do that on Sunday? No, we need to do it every time death is around because Jesus kicked death behind. And then I realized this is the principle of the thief comes to rob, steal, and destroy. You know what the, the thief is? Religion. Looks religious. Everybody going to heaven. But nobody wants to talk about Christ Jesus. I, I, was, li I was listening for something to come out of Michael Jordan's mouth about Christ. I'm going to be the best, the best, biggest brother. Yeah, I understand that. He called me at night. That's good. That's good. I'm waiting for some words to come out of his mouth about his relationship with Christ Jesus. Don't come out. Shaq even curses at the uh, program. Everybody laughed. Looking forward to see you in heaven one day. And I'm trying to figure out, y'all, do y'all read your Bible? The only way to God the Father is through Christ Jesus. You know, and happy birthday to Gigi. God bless. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Think, how come we're so spiritual? After a tragedy. And then about another three months, we'll be back to busy. All right, that's enough. Put that gospel stuff away. Back to baseball, back to basketball. See, God knows the pattern. Whatever God did to Israel in the Old Testament is, is, it is an example of what God will do to any nation that tries to forget God. 
I know I irk some of y'all nerves because you don't want to hear that. But I don't care. It's my show. At the end of the day, when you do, when you do funerals or homegoing services and Jesus Christ's name is not mentioned, you a thief and a robber. And trust me, I understand you operate at the level of your awareness. And here's the problem. We're more aware of NBA, major leagues, Hollywood, movies, charitable things we did. But how come we're not producing an abundance of kingdom talk and kingdom action? Because that's not what's being presented. Because Satan is a smart strategist. Shh, 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 shh. Don't talk about Jesus at these things. You're going to defend somebody. Don't talk about it. Because that's told you. See, the devil's job is to operate through a spirit of ignorance. I got to keep you blinded. I don't, I don't, I don't want you talking about Jesus in this, in this huge arena, because somebody might get saved. Hello, Gigi. Miss my girl so much. You are one of my faithful supporters. Thank you for your past support, Gigi. Love you, girl. Happy birthday to you and your family. God bless you, Gigi. You know, people like to put folk in heaven based on earthly accomplishments. I'm John said, I said. Do you know Christ as your Savior? I'm not just talking about quoting. Did you live for him? Did you call on his name? Did you use your resources to give to churches that are saving souls? Or did you just give your money to an organization to find research for cancer? Did you give your tithes and offerings to the ministry of the kingdom? Are we following the pattern in the book of Acts? Where it said, go ye through all the world and make disciples of nations? Where's, where's this talk at? Where's it at? I'm trying to figure it isn't there because it's not, because it's not our focus, you know. <laughs> and listen, and please don't take this offensively, man. But we do this all the time. I'll be waiting for major funerals where all these folks gather. When is it going to be an altar call for Christ Jesus? How can we afraid to talk about it? And then we got to get these people. Well, I, well, I think Michael Jordan is saved. I think Shaq is. How come we got to think about it? How come I can't tell? How come every how come every time I talk to you? You talk about being positive, being spiritual. How can y'all afraid to mention that name? Because that was the demon in John 9 that says, don't even mention that man's name. Let me tell you something. I'm praying that at the next tragedy, because there'll be another one, that God will raise the preachers who will preach the kingdom in these services. When you're attracting the audience of 30,000 people, we got to pray that the right preacher stands up front and open the doors of the church. You know, because you know, right now when these tragedies happen, the powers that be become sensitive and then let you talk about God a little bit. When you start talking about Jesus is the Christ, He's the Savior of the world. He comes to deliver. Let's 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 stand up and give our heart to Jesus. Then they say, Oh, it's a little bit too far. Oh, we don't want that much Jesus. We just want a little bit. We don't want let's just call him any name you want to call him, any guy you want to call him. That's not biblical. See, that's, that's the problem I have with some of these events. Now, I know we're there for the family. I know we're there to comfort the family. I understand all that. But here's the point I'm making. How can we're afraid to talk about Jesus? Scared to death. My faith is personal. No, it's not. That's a political lie. There's no such thing as your faith is personal. It's not your faith anyway. No such thing as my faith is personal. Your faith is not personal. No such thing as personal faith. You don't even own it. God gave you faith. Gave you a gift of faith. Gave you a measure of faith. And he tells you how to put the faith in the kingdom. Another tragedy is coming. Another shock and death is coming. Because America has not learned that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world that dwell therein. And our job is to preach Christ. And I'm going to be in some of these predicaments where death is going to come and going to say, me, Duffy, come preach in this arena. And I'm going to preach the hell out the arena. Now, maybe my last time preaching in front of y'all, but I'm not going and making nice speeches. The kingdom of God has come. That will be done on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Go to the cash app. My faith is personal. I mean, I don't want to be accountable or convicted. That's what it means. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't want to talk about Jesus. I'm ashamed of him. But I go home and talk about it. Well, I only talk about Jesus on Sunday. Oh my God. Go someplace. My prayers are continuing for Vanessa and the daughters. My prayers for the world hurting from the death of Kobe and the daughter and the others that died in a helicopter accident. 
but I rebuke the religious church who knows the truth and won't talk about Christ Jesus in those arenas. I rebuke you. Gotta go. Go to the Cash App, Dollar Sign Pastor Michael 7. If you enjoy this, go sow a seed today. Show your support for Reverend McDuffie. Show your support. This Sunday, I need, this Saturday, I need you 9 to 12 o'clock at 77 Park Ave. I'm doing a Signs and Wonders conference. It's open to everybody. Yes, another trip. I know it is, GG. Speak that thing. Because that's the only thing that opens up the core of the hearts of the people. But I pray that God would send forth the proper laborer that will preach the kingdom. I'm tired of religion. Relationships and an encounter with Christ. I got to go. There's the cash app. Let's go, y'all. So seed. I need your help. I need your help. God bless you.